What's going on guys, Playbox here, we're back for another Dragon Ball Legends video. In this one, we are going to be doing my top 10 best units in the game currently. Now, I wanted to do this um, before part 3 came because I wanted to do a top 10 video right before part 3 um, drops. And then, well, uh, there's still a ways to go before part 3. But then after part 3, I want to do a full-on Legends Limited slash Ultra Unit tier list just to end off the year with that big tier list there. But I think right now, I don't think the meta will change that much with part three. It's possible, right? It's possible. Part three ultras are definitely always very game breaking. So it's possible that's going to change a lot. But for now, I think we should just go over what the meta is looking like right now. And um, yeah, so the way we have it structured here, I only have 10 units listed here. Uh, right before we enter the 10 units, I guess I'll throw in a couple names that I think could be you could argue they could enter in the number 10 spot, maybe 9th. I don't think the 9th spot, but this 10th spot here, I have a unit selected, but I can give a couple options that, that I believe could potentially go there. Um, but I, I personally don't include them there. So just to start off things, um, so as I guess this, is, this could be an honorable mention, right? So for honorable mentions, we have, uh, I could say, Ultra Gogeta. He did not make the cut. Still a very, very good unit. Uh, um, but it's just that the units above him are uh, much better right now especially with the release of some units from part two and then you just don't really see him run that much right fusion warrior is kind of down bad right now which really sucks um but he has the potential to move up because i do believe uh believe that you know we're going to be getting an ultra fusion um for part three so he definitely has the option to go up same with the super Vegeta, right this man it hurts to see him not even included in the top 10 man well, but he was at the top of the game just a couple months ago and to see him fall so so low is just so stupid man i i I hate it so much, but like I said, he has the chance to go up as well. Um, this Trunks also is the, I guess, the last honorable mentions, to be honest. He's got, he is not in the top 10. I have a unit, you could argue he's number 10, but the unit I listed above, I think, is a bit more valuable right now, uh, considering the units that we just got uh, from part 2. Trunks is still very good. He has He's definitely fun to use, um, but obviously his glaring um, drawback is the fact that he has no cover null, which is something that you really need in uh, pvp right now especially in the higher ranks so that doesn't change the fact that he's still a monster and he can definitely be used to uh very well right so let's just move on to number 10 and the number 10 unit is a unit that wasn't even in the top 10 list at all um prior to this drop and it's going to be the tag androids now yeah they uh it's crazy to see how far we've come from their initial release but they haven't been in the top 10 for a while mainly because um, obviously they fell off boost and you know they kind of saw some power creep in uh, after falling off boost but their main issue was they didn't really have a team to be ran on like future was good but it was very very strike heavy with you know the trunks vb um, perfect cell all that stuff so it was very strike heavy and these guys really want to be more blast oriented especially with 17 since most of the time you're going to be tagged switched into 17 so they want to really be blast oriented but you know with the release of the new trunks and vegeta um with the samasu um, that forms a really nice pair, probably the best pair for, uh, or trio, sorry, for future. So running that with uh, with the 70 is still very good. If you have them at higher stars, they can still put in work, right? They have ridiculous green cards, always having cover null. They have obviously type disadvantage, reversal, being a tag unit. Uh, 18, you know, can do damage to Beast Gohan. Um, and you know, we, we already know how, we already know what they do, right? So that's why I feel like they kind of stepped it up a bit. Um, step up in value in this meta currently just because of the release of the the new tag unit and Zamasu So future is in a pretty decent spot or I would say in a good spot right now And I would argue their their core on the best uh, future setup. So that's gonna be number 10 Let's move on to number 9 and it's going to be Ultra legendary Super Saint Broly now I was contemplating on having him potentially a bit lower just because Actually, now that I think about it, I think 9 is a good spot. You can actually argue he could be 8, but I think for me personally, 9 is a good spot. Just because um, his best team, obviously, is movies right now. But if you're running him, you're mostly, mostly going to run him with uh, Beast Gohan and Pan, right? But if you have access to Future Gohan, which I would argue that Future Gohan is more accessible for players than this Ultra Broly. I mean, Future Gohan is also on the latest um, Step Up banner, so he's way more accessible than Broly. 
and if you if you're gonna be running Beast Gohan and Pan, you might as well just run him with Future Gohan instead. Or you can even run him with uh, the Attack Super Saiyan Force. I would argue those two are better options than um, than Broly and running them on movies, right? Like you, the the hybrid equip you, equips you have access to if you ran Future Gohan is just so much better. And you know the sport he go, get, Future Gohan gives you're just better off running Future Gohan if you're already gonna be running Beast Gohan and Pan. So that's why I have him a bit lower. And even even though he's still very good, he's currently the best ultra in the game. I don't remember the last time I faced this Broly. I literally can't remember. It's been so long, actually. Um, I granted up the God rank last season, and I I seriously cannot think how many times I faced this Broly, um, which is which is interesting since he's a very good unit. So that's also why I have him placed a bit lower. But uh, like I said, don't let that distract you from the fact that he's still a very good unit. Very uh, good at disrupting with his unique gauge. He's a very tanky unit and he still does really good damage as well. Um, so he's definitely a very, very good unit. But like I said, you know, if you're running <laughs> Beast Gohan and Pan, you're just better off running Future Gohan instead. So uh, that's going to be our number nine, right? Number nine. So let's move on to number eight. It's going to be the purple GT Hellfighter 17. Um, so this is the unit that you could argue, you know, Broly is above him but i think personally i would place him above just because he works so much better on his gt team than broly does with the other two units um you know he has an endurance nullification on his green card repeatedly he has a lock in with his main ability um inflicts two sub, sub count down but you can just like lock in go for a blast green card and then rush and you can kill beast going if you want because he, could, he just nullifies um Endurance, so that that is insane. I think he's the first unit to shut up, just nullify um, endurance through his green card, right? You pop it, and it's a, a stop time event, so that is very very good. And he offers really good support to his team. And then GT, obviously being, uh, I would say one of the best teams in the game. You can argue, you could potentially argue it's the best team in the game, but I would still give it to the, the hybrid setup. But a, a common misconception I see with a lot of people is that they think that GT is just so much below hybrids where it's really not the case at all like if you actually play high rank PvP like god rank PvP you will see that GT is very very common like it's almost as common as Beast Gohan okay I would okay I wouldn't say as common as the hybrids team but if I were to say like I would say like 65% is uh, Beast Gohan and 35% it's like GT or even like a 60 40 split right there, which is not bad at all. Like considering how oppressive the hybrids team is, and you're seeing a lot of GT, like that's a pretty good um, ratio there. Um, like GT is, is a very good team, especially with the other units still be on boost. Like it's very good. And you know, the 17 is definitely going to be core on that setup, right? With the attack force and LF4 coup. So that's why I haven't placed a bit higher just because his value to the team is much better than Broly's value to his team. So that's why I have him placed at number eight, right above Broly. So moving on to um, number seven. So the, the three last spots, they're kind of interchangeable and you can have other units, but I think the next seven spot, um, the units are gonna be pretty much the same across the board for most players, but maybe the ordering might be a bit different. So for me, I have um, Future Gohan at number seven. Now he has dropped significantly. Uh, I mean, not that much. He was like top, what, three, and then became top, I would say top five once uh, G part one came out, and then part two um, came out, and I would say it's, you know what I will say? You can argue that he's potentially above the next unit. Uh, I guess to, to show you who I have as the next unit, number six, I have Pan um, at number six here. You can argue that Super Saiyan Gohan can f go above pan simply because you can run a you can run them on the future tag with um the new tr the new trunks and zamas so you can run like a wild yellow yellow blue setup and that can work really well as well whereas pan um uh, actually now that i think about it pan also works on movies and hybrids so they both have access to two very good tags so it really just comes down to who has who provides the um who provides more value to the team overall and i would argue pan uh, def definitely does provide more value now it's important to know that pan just recently did fall off the feature boost so she's definitely taken a hit to i feel like she can produce maybe as much damage or at she can't i think the most common complaint is at, from what i've seen after her boost her dropping off boost is a boost is that she can't tank as well 
um, which is, uh, I guess, a, sign a big deal because if she can't tank as well, then you want to try to build her more defense-oriented. And if you're going to build her more defense-oriented, defense she's going to lose out a bit more damage. Because, let's be honest, she was doing ridiculous amount of damage all while still tanking. Um, like, that was not okay, right? So... It, I guess it makes sense now that, you know, she's, she's a support type unit, right, right? So she's not meant to do a crazy amount of damage, but she's still meant to be a good supporting unit, have some decent tanking disruption abilities, which she does with the key reduction and arts power um, down. So she does that very well. And I, I guess future Gohan, although he doesn't support as well, he does, he still does give that support. He has endurance. He does pretty good damage as well, especially since he's an older unit. People have him at higher stars. But, you know, Pan is a 1% spark unit, so people also have her have her at higher stars and she was given for free to everyone so most people have access to this pan right and she's obviously able to get z power much more um much more easily than future going but still um like i said you can in you can they're interchangeable but i do think that pan just provides more value to the team uh compared to future gohan so that's why i have pan over future gohan in this little ranking here so future gohan what is this number seven uh, yeah, 10, 8, 9, 7, and then Pan at 6 is going to be my uh, number 6 spot. So now we are moving into the top 5 placement here. Um, this is getting a bit more, I guess, concrete, the placement. Uh, you could argue certain spots switched around, maybe. But I think this is where I would say most people have their placement. But me personally, this is... Uh, this works perfectly for me. So number five, we have, yes, the tag Super Saiyan 2 Trunks and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. Now, dude, um, there's a lot of mixed opinion on this unit, right? There's a lot of people saying he's underwhelming. There's a lot of people saying he's very, very good. Me personally, I do think that they are very, very good, right? Being a top five unit in itself, especially in this meta right now, is very, very good. But... You know, a lot of people, you know, reading their kits um, were going into the, the game thinking that they were going to be like the best unit in the game, but they just did not deliver on that. And that's why people are saying they're under, um, they're overrated, um, which I guess is fine. That's why th th this unit is a perfect example on why you shouldn't judge a unit just strictly based on their kit. You have to see gameplay of them first and how they perform in the PvP. Uh, in a PvP setting, because although it might look good on paper, it might not directly translate so well on uh, game in game in game, and that could also be applied by like the other way around, right? Like they, certain units might not look too great on paper, but they might work even better on in game. So that's why it's very important to wait and see some gameplay first before you judge a unit. Um, but I think this Trunks is definitely um, an, a great example of that. The one thing I have a big issue of with this Trunks is this, um, first of all, there's one another issue also, is their key restoration is very slow and they don't gain key that often. Like when you switch out, you just gain what, 20 key? 20 key is very little. Um, I swear like the other tag units get way more, but yeah, 20 key is little and their key restore is not that high. They, it, I feel like whenever I'm charging with this unit and doing charge stuff and stuff, they barely gain any key and it really restricts their combo potential. And then we go into uh, one of uh, the one of the other big controversial, um, I guess, unique, and it's this one. This is their only way of gaining cover nullification, and it's only for two timer counts when you use a blast guard and it activates once. This basically doesn't allow you to charge step after that blast guard. You're forced to chain your cards right away if you want to actually make use of that cover nullification. So the best way to utilize this is just to when you're let's say you're using another unit and you want to switch into this trunks the best way to utilize it is just switch into that trunks and use the blast card like expecting them to cover change that's the only way you can use it you can effectively use this um, cover nullification because after that initial blast card if you don't chain it with the other blast card that you're going to be drawing anyway when you use the first blast card um you're not going to really gain much value from this um cover nullification which is kind of annoying if i if they made that like five time recounts, that would have been so much better. But two car two time recounts is just nothing. It's very uh, very stupid. 
And then the other one is the 70% damage inflict that he gets once he stays in the battlefield for 20 time recounts. Now, it says here that it's from either battle start or after this character enters the battlefield via tag switch. I don't understand, like, does this mean like you're from battle start or after this character enters the field? Oh, I guess if, because when you're starting with, uh, okay, okay, so when you're starting the battle, you're obviously already tagged into the trunks, right? So then once 30, 20 time recounts elapse, then you can get the 70% damage inflicted. Uh, effects reset when tagged switch into Vijay. Yeah, that, that's just so stupid. Like you have to literally wait 20 time recounts with the trunks to get access to these abilities. But you know, when you're, when you're just using a tag character, the how you wanna play with them is you wanna switch them out back and forth right that's how you can get full effects of your kid but this this effect basically incentivizes you not to switch out as often which is kind of weird and why would you wait 20 time recounts um with the trunks right even with the unit itself like you're constantly switching out units repeatedly throughout the match so waiting 20 time recounts is already long enough it's just uh it's just kind of weird but i guess what this means also actually 20 time recounts this can actually mean that when you're using the trunks and you leave out of the battlefield the 20 time recount still po uh, applies so wait or after this, ent this character enters a battlefield from battle stars enters the battlefield so does that mean that if you switch out like switch out units and then you come back and you're still using trunks the t 20 time recounts still continue and you're able to utilize the 70 percent damage cut damage inflicted that m that might be the case um that might be the case, but it's just still weird. They shouldn't have had this restric restriction, and if they wanted to have this restriction, they should have at least made this like 10 time recounts. 20 time recounts is way too long, so you're not able to really see the full potential of this unique um, too often, which is really weird. It's just a weird way to design this kit. But other than that, they do very good blast damage. They do a lot of damage. Um, obviously, they don't tank too well. The blue card sometimes seems a bit underwhelming at times, but it can do a lot of damage. Overall, they're a very good unit, but um, they I feel like they could have been a slightly a bit better, but that's just me. So number five is going to be the tag trunks in Vegeta. So going into number four, I, this might be, I guess, I don't think this is too controversial to be honest, but we have LF Zenkai Super Saiyan 4 Goku. This dude is insane, man. Easily, I mean, it's not even a debate, obviously. He's the best Zenkai LF unit currently in the game. Um, he just works so well with the GT team. He does so much damage. After you lose an ally, I think he has one of the hardest hitting ultimates in the game. One of the scariest last man unit in the game currently. Um, this guy is just insane, right? And he works, like I said, yellow. He works very well with the attack uh, fours. Work, works well with 17, baby, whatever support unit you're using. And also, when you get an ally down, I believe he gets. Let me wait. This is the, does he does he not have all his uniques on this website? Uh, I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. But he gets coronal once he he does lose an ally, and I do believe that's like. All the time when he switches in for a certain amount of time recounts I, I could be wrong but double check on that he does get two cover rescues if you're running with two gt battle members or sun family which you're mostly going to be using you're really not using this unit outside of gt or sun family so um i think or maybe it's only gt but you're not going to be using them outside of gt most of the time right but and their zenkai ability is really good like uh yellow saiyans i don't know why it's not updated on this is it not up okay zenkai ability but where is uh, unique abilities am i missing this there's one here and then there's one here um plus one special cover applies to following stuff cover is there where's the cover nullification of unique ability um should be somewhere here but i guess it's not yeah i guess it's not here but um yeah this guy is so so ridiculous it does so much damage he's actually such a great unit uh, i'm so glad i was able to z power z power him up um, with my remaining, with all this Legends Limited Z power that we got throughout the festival to get him to seven stars, I can Zenkai him. But um, yeah, this guy number four, I think it's, I think it's a good spot to have him, especially considering the fact that GT is one of the best teams in the game right now, uh, and their core is just filled with like top ten units, two top uh, five units. It's just a very good unit overall. He's awesome. Moving on to number three, this is probably the most shocking one. Um, uh, maybe not like, I guess it's not shocking anymore since people are, are agreeing with this, but shocking in the way that 
this unit <laughs> is 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 crazy, right? It's going to be this one percent sparking Zamasu. When was the last time we had a one percent sparking unit that dropped us alongside an LF unit, and that one percent sparking unit being better than the LF? When was the last time? Cool. Oh, we don't even get one percent sparking units that often. But I think if I remember correctly, the last time this was the case was it the Gogeta Blue Banner where Red Dragon Ball Super uh, Frieza was on? I do think Frieza at that time was better than Gogeta Blue just because, you know, a lot of people, first of all, didn't have Gogeta Blue at higher stars, so they weren't able to properly rate him. But at the time, I think on, on release, Dragon Ball Super uh, Frieza was better than uh, Gogeta Blue. And then prior to that, you could say that Blue Topo was better than UI Sign Goku. So, what was that? Two years ago. That was the two years ago was there, during Legends Festival. I do think that was the last time a unit was uh, <laughs> the Spark unit was that good. And here we are today with Zamasu being an absolute beast, man. This guy is crazy. Does crazy damage. His green card is very good. You know, it's like similar to the Broly green green Broly where it knocks back people when they use like a strike card or tap attack or whatever. This actually nullified my Rising Rush. I don't know if that's possible but it actually it did it's literally on video in my my zamasu showcase like i use a rising rush at mid range he went for the green card and it stopped like like i didn't know that was a thing but he gets cover nullifications for five time recounts get a card to 50 key like what more can you ask for he has uh the blue card hits very hard actually that's really good he has art art power down um, right here, 40% to special move, R's power down. He reduces key by 30 on hit, and this activates count re uh, resets every switch. But then he also does this two times, so he does 30, 20, 20. Like, what? This is like Pan's reduction on steroids. It's insane. And he has endurance. He has insane amount of health restoration. Like, dude, this guy is so good like you can see you can tell from my video showcase where i showcased him initially like you could tell how surprised and shocked i was with what he was doing and even in the vegeta trunks showcase you you could see me getting shocked on how good the opponent zamasu was doing like it's crazy how good this unit is and to be in his shoes like being the better unit of the banner that just dropped is completely mind-blowing man and, and it's it's a good thing right this guy helps a lot of the teams that he needed future needed the help regen needed the help god key needed the help all these unit uh, these teams could very well benefit from this guy's release uh, especially god key man god key really needed a unit like this that does all that he does and has a, some sort of rising rush control in the form of endurance because they were lacking that a lot ui goku has the uh, endurance after when he's last man but at that point you really want to have it earlier on in the game in case they get a rush, not when you're like last man, right? But so this guy fills that shoe very well. Overall, just a crazy unit. And moving forward, I think he's probably going to be your go-to leader slot unit for teams that are missing some sort of final unit. He's that go-to leader slot unit right now. He's he's just insane. Uh, very, very happy with how he turned out. And, and he's, he's crazy. That's all I have to say. So that's number three. Moving on to number two, we have the tag fours. And I'm guessing you can already guess what I have as number one. We have Beast Go on. Now, quick disclaimer. For anyone that actually puts Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta the tag unit in front of Beast Gohan, I have no problem with that whatsoever. You don't understand how cracked this unit is if you think that the gap between Beast Gohan and Goku are and Tag Goku and Vegeta are that far. Like if you seriously think that the gap is that big, you're you're not playing PvP. Uh, this guy is cr is crazy, and also don't let that distract you from the fact that Beast Gohan also just dropped out of the boost system, right? So obviously he fell off a bit in that sense because he lost some defense and he lost some damage, right? So um, technically he did quote unquote fall off from what he was on the boost system, right? But I would still say he's still number one because let's be honest, it was that boost. It wasn't gonna affect him that much, right? But I have I don't have a problem with people placing this Goku and Vegeta above Beast Gohan, considering the fact first of all he does have boost. Um, second, his teams are I would say equal to Beast Gohan's team. Like GT, in my opinion, is also equal, if not slightly um, lower than hybrids. But I personally think they're equal. And then 
Uh, they both have crazy support, although I do uh, agree that Pan and Future Gohan support for Future for Beast Gohan is much better. But what's I think what's even crazier is that like Super Saiyan 4 Goku, in my opinion, is obviously better than uh, Future Gohan, and just those two synergize so well, and they're such powerhouses that like it just makes the team so much better and then this tag four man they just do so much green card is annoying as hell um blue card hits the non-stop crits they get is insane like they get so much crit damage it's crazy it feels like you're using bardock with on super saiyans again like it actually does feel like that um and the blue card oh the blue card restoring vanish is so good like when you destroy three cards and you get vanish like that's so good um I will say the Vegeta side is slightly underwhelming. Like compared, if you compare the Vegeta side to the Goku side, the Goku side is so much better than the Vegeta side. But um, he's more of a way to get yourself back to Goku, if that makes sense. And then the cover null on uh, Switch Out is also very good. Overall, they're just such a great unit, and uh, that's why I have him at number two. But like I said, I don't have a problem with people placing him at number one. And then we come into Beast Go On. I mean, is there really anything? really to say with this guy um he's just that guy he's just stupid he's broken he's he's everything right he gets endurance on rush um he one shots basically everyone with blue card ultimate whatever it is he gains vanish he has seemingly unlimited cover nullification unlimited type neutrality <laughs> what were they thinking when they made this unit man it just really is ridiculous but i don't think there's really much to say about beast go on he's just simply the best in the game and he i don't know how long he's going to be the best unit i do feel like the part 3 ultra is going to dethrone him uh but for now he's the best unit so there's my top 10 if we quickly run through it tag joy is number 10 broly number 9 17 at number 8 future go on number 7 pan 6 uh tag super saiyan 2 trunks and super saiyan blue vegeta at number 5 lf 4 ku at um Number four is a monster three, tag four is at number two, and then Beast Gohan at number one. So that's gonna be it for this one. Definitely drop a comment letting you know what you guys have as your top five, top ten, whatever. Who you guys think are the top three? Who's the best unit? Whatever it is, or what you if you agree or disagree with my list, what would you change? Definitely let me know in the comments. I'm interested to know what you guys have to say. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe because that's it's so important. So don't forget. I'm gonna have a great day. See ya.